So in the program, I lost 12 pounds and it was fairly easy and it was surprising me. I was like, oh my God, how is this even possible? Like I am eating the most delicious food. I'm eating the food of my people, which is like potatoes. And I'm like, how am I losing this much weight? It's amazing. I am coming at you from the golden hour time of day, which is why I'm looking quite golden right now, but also because I have such a beautiful glow. No, but I am going to introduce you to somebody who does have a beautiful glow. She is an esthetician too, so it does make sense, but you glow from the inside out, and as you will see in this interview with my client, Monica, she is such a beautiful soul. I helped share her story by taking us back all the way to the very beginning. Her first memories of food being around eating the Girl Scout cookies in secret from her mom's little cupboard of cookies, knowing that what she was doing was wrong, bad, guilty, and we dig through that a little bit. You know, we start at the very beginning, and then we go all the way up to her time being a parent and being in Slim on Starch. And so we talk about even parenting when it comes to eating this way and how to properly raise a child so that you don't have them be too cognizant of food. You know, you want to help them, but you don't want to harm in the way that you're helping them. So this conversation is across the entire lifespan. And for anybody that has struggles with food starting in childhood or anybody who is a parent, I think everybody watching this video will pick up something from this because we go through every stage of the life cycle. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the story of my client, Monica, who released 12 pounds through our eight weeks together, and she's going to inspire you tremendously. Let's get into it. When I was, when I was about 10 years old, I was a Girl Scout, and my mom would buy like loads of cookies. We had like a cupboard full of cookies for the whole year. <laughs> and I would sneak into that cupboard and I would eat like tons of cookies. And I knew I wasn't supposed to because it wasn't like mine to do, but it's something that I had in secret. It was like my secret little obsession when I would get really, you know, um, tired or wanting to self-soothe, I would just go back there and, and just eat my, my mom's cookies. And I think at that point, you know, I'm, you know, 10 years old around, I kind of started a binge recycle, uh, or binge restrict cycle. And so I also developed like this shame around food, like food being good, food being bad. And, um, eating these types of foods in secret. And so um, as I got older, I kind of had the same pattern. So I would, you know, eat really healthy foods. I was a farmer, so I grew a lot of my own vegetables. I was vegetarian for many, many years. And I, I would just eat like a super clean diet. And then, you know, I would eat these foods like fast food or you know, candy, cookies, these types of foods that would give me this like rush, this dopamine high, and I would feel so good. But I seriously had like this shame about it. Um, like I wouldn't want my friends to know about that. I wouldn't want my partner. I wouldn't want my child to know about it. And so I was just kind of caught in this like loop of like eating well and then binging on bad foods. And, you know, I've tried so many different diets throughout the years. Um, you mentioned the word shame a lot. And it's so important to remember that shame is an emotional feeling, but hunger is a biological feeling. And a lot of times we mix these two things. We take hunger and we apply emotions to it. And so to be able to separate those is our goal here. Mm -hmm. So what did you try to get a hold of the whole food thing. I know that you had quite the resume when we first spoke, things like OA and different types of oh diets. God. You want to talk about those? Oh gosh. Well, um, in the order, the order is mixed up in my head. It was just like a blur of trying different things. Oh my gosh. I did like the celery juice fast for a long time and it's really hard to work when you're doing that if you know what I mean it's just everything goes right through you um 
I did that. I did the ketogenic diet. That was probably the worst thing I could have ever done. Um, the brain fog was unreal. It was so hard to think. Um, and it was expensive and the food was just nasty. I'm not going to lie. I, I I'm a pretty agreeable person and I think people should, you know, eat what they want, you know, it's, it's their life. But seriously, when people say that they do the ketogenic diet, I'm like, I'll just put my foot down and I'm like, that's not really healthy for you. <laughs> and I let them know why in my experience and my skin just like got so gross during that time period and so oily. So I've done that. Um, I did OA for a little bit. It wasn't for me. It was like really restrictive. It just wasn't really right for me because um, I had to like weigh my food, right? I was counting calories, you know, I thought about it and I'm like, I can't, or I'm not willing to weigh everything that I put in my body. Like that doesn't seem like an authentic way of eating. Um and the overeating, I didn't, I felt like I only overate when I was really hungry. It wasn't like I was always overeating. And it was mainly just my struggle of staying away from foods that were, you know, high in oil and um, high in sugars, you know, those addictive foods that I really needed help with. You know, coming from my background of um, like strict Catholicism. I just grew up feeling like things were either right or they were wrong. And so all or nothing type of an approach in my brain, you know? And so that's what I would do. I would do all or nothing. I would like throw myself in while I was inspired, but we all know that ins inspiration kind of dribbles off if we're not getting a daily dose of it. Right. And I lose my inspiration and and also these diets just aren't really sustainable over time, you know, and I would lose my inspiration and I would, you know, want to have all the, the things that I was depriving myself of. And then one day, just out of desperation, I like Googled, is there like a high carb diet out there? There has to be, there's a diet for everything. Um, and then I went down like the YouTube rabbit hole and found you. What you just described is so common. And I think that a lot of people can develop a lot of shame around what happens in the binge restrict cycle. And I want people to understand who are watching this video that that cycle of binge restrict, that has absolutely nothing to do with our character or who we are as a person. That's a natural side effect of starvation and deprivation. And that's just what the human body does. It's like when you don't plug in your phone, it dies. That doesn't mean that the iPhone is a bad phone. It just means that when you don't plug it in, it dies. That's the way it goes. The same, things ha the same thing happens with humans. When we don't get enough food, when, we're, well, when we are in starvation, we end up binging to make up for it. That's just the way the human body works. So I'm glad that you were candid in speaking about that to have this come to light, that that's just the normal way that humans work. And there's no, there's nothing shameful about it. That's just what tends to happen. Um, and then also pointing to what we call the pink cloud. When you get on a new diet, you're on this pink cloud and you're so excited and you, you know, can't, you're loving every day on your new diet. And then that pink cloud starts to wear off and then the motivation goes away because we can't rely on motivation. Motivation gets us started, but habits keep us going. Yeah. Speak a little bit about what happened when you went to South America and what your diet was oh, like yeah. there. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, so I went down to Ecuador with, at that time, my daughter was about six years old and I went with my husband and we, um, had an amazing trip. We did a lot of hiking. So, you know, on average about anywhere from five to 10 miles, you know, every few days. And we were on a super low budget. Like we, we had, <laughs> this is like in my early twenties, we had budgeted like $30 to, 
to live off of a day. And that included staying in a hotel, you know? So we didn't have a lot of money. And, you know, we were eating out. And what we found was that we could get like a lunch meal and do like rice and beans and veggies. And we could all eat and be full and we'd be fine. And we were able to live off of $30 a day, you know, 10 to $15 for a hotel room and then the rest for food or transportation. Um, but I lost weight and I, I wasn't hungry. I wasn't eating the sweets that I was before. And I was eating like kiss meals. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I lost probably in about two weeks. I lost a lot of weight and I came back and my clothes were really baggy. And, and it was like the first time that I wasn't really trying to lose weight. It just, I remember reading that in your application, you said one of the only times I've ever lost weight is when I was in South America eating rice and beans. And it's mm -hmm. just, it's interesting, Monica, when we look back on your story, all signs point to you having success on a slim on starch diet because you said you loved sugar. You said that you didn't want to count calories. You didn't want to starve yourself. You loved carbohydrates. And then when you ate the rice and beans, you ended up having success. So mm -hmm. everything was leading you here. We just had to put it all together in one. Well, thank you for creating a program that, you know, puts it all together for people. A lot of us are just trying to figure it out on our own and, you know, through trial and error and going through all the different diets and listening to everyone's advice, it can just be like a big headache and people can lose hope. That's what, you know, that's what really inspired me to share my story because, you know, I would try things, I would get inspired, I would do it. And then, you know, maybe I'd lose five pounds or whatever. And then I would just give up because it wasn't sustainable. And to me, it really matters that people know that it is sustainable and you can enjoy your food. You don't have to weigh food and you're eating, in my opinion, the way that nature intended you to eat. Mm -hmm. So what was different with SOS that that pink cloud didn't fade away? And here we are all this time later and you're still moving, you're still going strong with it. So in the program, I lost 12 pounds and it was fairly easy and it was surprising me. I was like, oh my God, how is this even possible? Like I am eating the most delicious food. I'm eating the food of my people, which is like potatoes. And I'm like, how am I losing this much weight? It's amazing. I think it's on week, week two, when we do the food prep section. So on week two, that really helped gear me up. Um, and food prep is all about just getting your food ready for the week so that you can have success. And it really becomes no different than going to the laundromat. You know, you have to get your clothes washed or going to get gas. Like these things just need to happen. And to be set for success, we know that there's certain things that we need to do. And so today is my food prep day. <laughs> and I looked at my boyfriend and I said, I'm so excited. And he was like, why? And I'm like, it's food prep day. <laughs> um, and I rather, you know, I really enjoy it. It's something that brings me a lot of joy. Um, it's just fun. I don't know why, you know, chopping the vegetables and cooking the food and, and just having a full, full fridge full of foods that are easy to eat that are healthy. Um, as a, you know, as a single mom, that makes my life much easier. Mm -hmm. I think that people very much underestimate the, how powerful and impactful food prep is for your success because people think, Oh, I don't have motivation. I don't have willpower. I don't have a strong enough. Why? And while things like having a why are very important, Having your environment set you up for success is the number one determinant of success. Think of it this way. If we all lived in a world where junk food didn't exist, then a lot of these problems wouldn't exist. So if we can create that sort of environment in your home, then so much of the work is done for you. So I'm glad that you mentioned that, you know, it's, it's not about getting this super strong willpower. It's just get your food prep habit in place, just like you do your laundry every week. Exactly. 
So that was like a wonderful side effect of the program. Um, but also there's something uh, called primary foods that you talk about in your program. And it's like the foods that fill us up that are not foods. They're like things that we do that fill us up with joy. And one thing that I've discovered is that I love going bike packing and mountain biking with my boyfriend. It's wonderful because I get to spend time with him and then I get to be outside and I get to ride my mountain bike and it's just like fills me up to the brim. Um, and with mountain biking, you have, or with bike packing, you have all your gear strapped to your bike. So you might have like 45 pounds of stuff on your bike. And when you're doing single track, you can just be really exhausting and every pound counts. So when I lost that 12 pounds, I instantly thought, oh my gosh, this is going to make like my bike, bike packing experience so much easier. So every year we go up to, um, we do a destination and we'll go uh, bike packing for anywhere from five to 10 days. And this year for our birthdays, we decided to go to Washington state and we went to the Olympic Peninsula and we, oh my gosh, the first day we rode like over 50 miles and did 8,000 feet in elevation and being able to ride that bike with the that 12 pounds gone I was able to ride like longer than I've ever rode before in my life mm -hmm. and it was still a very exhausting trip um but I was surprised by my cardio and my ability to just keep on going it was like it was awesome, you know? So that, that was a huge benefit to um, the program, like being able to go on this trip and not be in agony like I have been before. I love mm -hmm. that you mentioned that, Monica, because so often I'll, I'll talk with new clients and I'll say, okay, once we figure this out, once we figure the whole food thing out, we figure the whole weight thing out, then what? And they go, what do you mean then what? I, I don't know. There is, I, I don't know. I've just been thinking about food and weight this whole time that I don't even know what I want to do once I have a healthy body. And that's why primary foods are so important. Our food is what allows us to go live this nice full life. It shouldn't be that we live to eat, but instead we eat to live and go do things like that backpacking trip. Yeah, it was awesome. And, and part of my signature system after I graduated with S uh, from SOS was that when I do ride that I would have, <clears throat> have foods that I don't normally have, you know, like nuts and, and dried fruits, foods like that to carry me through because I don't even know how many calories I was burning, you know, riding from seven in the morning to seven at night you know that's a lot mm -hmm. and for me like it's nice to be home like you know I had those types of foods to like fuel myself but it wasn't due to like desire to like oh have this like you know food that I've been wanting to have it was really just to push me along um but I'm happy being home and and doing my food prep and having you know, the fresh greens that you don't really get when you're <laughs> backpacking <laughs> and out there. Yeah. Something else that I wanted to chat about was you had great success during the program, but it didn't require you to be a hundred percent. I know that some tough things happen. You lost your cat for a bit of time. Um, oh my God. So when these things happen or some stress at work that happened, you, you weren't a hundred percent SOS, but that's okay. You were honest about it and you were able to get right back on with SOS. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that, that was a big deal. Like I lost my cat twice during the program. He just is an escape artist. Like he, <laughs> ugh, I love him dearly, but he's like half wild cat, you know, <laughs> he's a Savannah and he just likes to get out and roam. So yeah, that was hard for me. Um, I was super emotional and, and sad and it just was like a really low point for me. And I did eat foods that weren't in the program, but it didn't mean that to me, 
like I was able to get back on that horse. It didn't mean like I failed. I think so many times I've gone into life like wanting to be an A plus student. And I almost feel like there's a stain on my record. Like if I mess up, then that means like, why try? It's like that all or nothing mental approach that's gotten me into so much trouble in my life. And so like going through your program, you're not going to come out the same person at the end. You know, these, these types of mindsets, you work with a mindset coach and your mindset is, it's going to change. You know, there's certain mindsets that just don't serve us. Um, and so, yeah, I ate some foods that weren't so good, but I didn't, I didn't like stay stuck in the mental mud of thinking that equals me being a bad person or not having good enough you know, what willpower, like this good or bad nonsense. Like I just, you know, just like I was, I was sick, you know, I just made myself some soup and some good food afterwards. That was really nourishing and got back on that horse again, (laughs) you know, and, and that was the best thing. And afterwards I could reflect upon, uh, the pattern. And I realized that, you know, if I was able to eat SOS during that time, I think it would have been really supportive for me. Um, And so that's something that I can, you know, try to do in the future is just being able to step aside and see like, okay, there's some drama, there's a pattern happening. How can I support myself instead of, you know, going down the cycle of, of eating foods that aren't the best for me. Um, But either way, just just getting back on the horse and eating those healthy foods is the thing that I'm really proud about. I'm so proud of you for that because that is one of the hardest things for people to do is to allow themselves to be in the gray area. The black and white is so easy to fall into. It's yes, no, good, bad, right, wrong, black, white, but it keeps us on a, this binge restrict cycle. And the most successful clients in the long term are the ones that are okay in the gray area, which is what, what you've done. So kudos mm-hmm. to you for that. Mm, thanks. It's nice to have my cat back too. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> we got a tracker collar for him. <laughs> I love it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you Googled high, going back, you Googled high carb diet one day. And you ended up finding this sort of lifestyle. Did you try it on your own? What was it that got you from that first Google search to us being on the phone together? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, the first person I found was Dr. McDougall. And I felt so much better. Like inside, I felt better. My my mood definitely was stabilized. And, um, yeah, it was just, just like a feeling of feeling good inside. And so I realized like, okay, well, maybe I should see if anyone's doing coaching. And then I came across you and that's how I found you. Um, but I realized that me doing it by myself, I wasn't losing weight, which is what I wanted to do. I was feeling good, but I recognized like, okay, I need someone who's nerded out on this. Like I'm just putting my toe in the water right now. I want someone who's like obsessed with this diet that can guide me. And just watching your videos, I'm like, oh yeah, this, this woman is totally into it. And, you know, when you practice it in your coach, you know, you can easily look at, at someone's life and go, okay, this is where the holes are. You know, I couldn't see where the holes were because, you know, I haven't, I was like new into it and I wasn't truly like living it. Thank you for saying that because I see my whole lens is through this lifestyle and I can Mm -hmm. look at somebody's diet in five seconds, know exactly like you said, where the holes are. It's just so glaringly apparent to me, whereas For somebody like you, you know, with, with your expertise, if I, if I needed help with my skin, with you being Mm -hmm. an esthetician, you Mm -hmm. would look at my skin and I'd talk to you about my regime and you would know right away. Yep. That's what it is. Cause that's your language. And if you want to become good at something, go to the expert. So I'm so glad that you, you're so coachable and open to learning. Yeah, totally. Uh, 
so excited to find someone that was passionate or is passionate about it. And um, yes, I recognize we don't, we don't have all the answers. We don't know everything. And I think, you know, when you realize that there's a gap and you need help um, and you find the right person, that there's a trust, that you trust the universe, you trust your gut, because it takes a lot of trust to go, I surrender, I'm going to trust this person, I'm going to trust this program to lead me through something that is very intimate, you know, like changing our life, um, changing the way that we view about ourselves, like, as I said, you're not going to be the same person when you finish, and um, I, I'm just like very, very thankful that I fell in your hands and your program is like so organized too, which I really appreciate. It doesn't jump around. Everything makes sense. And for me, like it really like held my hand through that process of being able to trust someone new. So your daughter, Mm -hmm. I'm sure she does need a hundred percent SOS, of course, because she's a normal kid. Um, so I'm sure she has other snacks in the house and other things are around and, you know, you have your boyfriend too. How do you navigate all of this? Sure. Um, okay. With my daughter, um, let's see, I cook the foods that I would cook for myself, for her. She likes meat. I keep that in the freezer, throw it in the air fryer for her. Um, that's something she's like almost 17 years old. So that's something that I'll prepare for her, um, is just chicken. I don't really mess with anything else. Um, and it's kind of like her choice. I I've released it. Like my job as her parent is to help her navigate life, not to control her life. And this is a choice that I feel like at her age, she is, able to make on her own and all I can do is like live my life by example and maybe she'll want to follow some of that example maybe not I don't know um and then for my boyfriend like sometimes he'll have like he'll have like treats around and stuff and sometimes I have a little bite but I'm not I'm not like eating a lot of foods that are you know the foods that would bother me in the past you know just little nibbles here and there and uh, it seems like more of our connection is like going for bike rides and spending time together in other ways than food. That was so beautifully said, Monica. There was one thing you said um, with your daughter. It's your job not to control her life, but to help her navigate life. That is gold right there. Because I know a lot of women struggle because they say, I don't want to put any food issues onto my daughter. I don't want mm-hmm. her to have any body image issues. If she's seeing me eat this way, will she think, oh, I have to eat that way? And it's important to remember that every, every daughter who's raised by a mother is going to have to go through their own journey with food, regardless of what went on. Um, so mm-hmm. you know, your daughter will have her own journey and every mother out there that's listening if you have a daughter and this has gone through your mind you know I don't want to influence her in any way she's going to figure it out for herself anyway so I'm so glad that you said that yeah totally and I don't want to pass shame on her like I had um, and you know if I'm her system for making all the food and all her food choices what happens when I'm gone you know, she's going to have to figure it out at some point. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to your past self who was Um, struggling with a binge or shirt cycle and sugar and all of that? Oh my God. I seriously would want to hug her and say that you're so worthy of love. This has nothing to do with who you are. Um, You just need, you need a guide, you know, you need some support. Um, there's so many leaders out there that will lead people to wherever they want to lead you, you know, and there's a lot of like misinformation. And I I think that I would have much more compassion for myself and go, look, girl, you're trying, right? Um, so I think that I would do that. I, 
I wish I also would have asked some like probing questions of myself of like, huh, I wonder why beans and rice and veggies were the thing that made me feel so good. Like, how can I start to eat those foods at home? Like those, those questions would have been really helpful for me. Um, but I think compassion is the biggest answer, you know, for myself, Right. you know, that goes back to what we said earlier that there's so much shame associated with this, but this is not, you know, this is a biological thing and we don't need to associate these emotional feelings with, I got really, really hungry. So I ate. Yeah. <laughs> That's what your body does when it gets really hungry. There's nothing shameful about that at all. And your past is not a life sentence. We can rewrite this. So I'm so happy that you chose to, to rewrite it. Yeah, it's great. I, I feel like this is totally sustainable, you know, for myself and other people. And also, um, you know, I am an esthetician. So my clients see me all the time and they're like, what are you doing? You look so good. And, and even though like throughout this program, I've built my own significance, um, through not looking for others or to others to find my significance, it's, you know, having those primary foods has helped me find significance within myself, but it is really nice. It's this byproduct of, you know, hearing my clients go, oh, your skin is glowing. You look really good. What are you doing? And I get so happy to share you and also to like, you know, watch their faces when I go, I'm eating a lot of potatoes. They're like, no. <laughs> no they think I'm lying and I'm like no I am so so that's wonderful I like that do you have any personal goals that you're working toward right now oh my well okay um personal goals I want to go on some more bike rides because that's a lot of fun I, I live in California so there's the there's like the Tahoe Rim Trail. It goes all around Lake Tahoe. Um, and I did a part, I did part of it last year and that was a lot of fun, but that's a goal to do this summer to, to see if I can get all around that, that lake. <laughs> um, also, one of my goals when I started was to feel more comfortable and more sexy in, um, in sundresses. And so, you know, just find some more sundresses and, and feeling like confident, you know, being outside and stuff in the summer is something that um, I'm looking forward to, you know, it feels, it feels good to be in my body, you know? Mm -hmm. It's all about the feeling and people will say, you know, I, I feel vain by saying that I want to look good in dresses and I go, well, that's just the tip of the iceberg. It's the feeling mm -hmm. that you have when you wear that stuff. It's not the manifestation is that you can fit into certain dresses or whatever it is, but it's the feeling of confidence and the, I did it associated with it. It's a good feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And just, there's a feeling like a lightness of being, you know, by eating the foods because they're full of so much like prana, so much vitality that is, you know, better than even weight loss is just feeling so good from eating, you know, foods that are rich in vitality. So I love, I love that. If you want to get slim on starch, go to healthyemmy.org. Thank you, Monica, for being the best. If you are still watching, the secret word is glow because we're here at the five o'clock hour during the golden hour. I love you, honeys, and I'll see you in the next one. Woo! Time, time, time.